Hello, welcome to Storytime with Clare Libraries. My name is Orla and today I'm going to read a story from the book Irish Legends, Newgrange, Tara and the Boyne Valley, written by Ethna Massey and illustrated by Lisa Jackson. And today I'm going to read one of the stories called Fionn's First Adventures. Fionn's First Adventures. Fionn was a young boy who lived on the banks of the Boyne River. He was a servant of a man called Finnegus. Fionn had to do all the work, the cooking, the cleaning, gathering firewood and lighting the fires. But the one thing he was not allowed to do was fish. His master Finnegus spent all his days fishing in the part of the river where a huge salmon lived. One day Fionn heard a cry of joy. Finnegus was pulling the biggest salmon Fionn had ever seen out of the river. The salmon winked at Fionn. Cook this, called Finnegus, his voice shaking with excitement, but be sure that you don't eat any of it, not even a bit of its skin. Fionn carefully balanced the salmon on a spit over the fire, poking it with a stick so that it cooked on all sides. But when he started to take the salmon off the spit, he touched the hot skin with his thumb. Ouch, he shouted, and stuck his thumb in his mouth to cool it down. And then something very strange happened. All at once, Fionn felt all the knowledge of the world come rushing into his head. Finnegus appeared and peered closely at him. You look different, he shouted. Oh, you have eaten the salmon. Oh, I didn't mean to, said Fionn. I burnt my thumb and tried to suck it better. Ah, that fish is the salmon of wisdom. I've been trying to catch it for years. And now all the knowledge in it has gone into your thumb. Finnegus threw the salmon on the ground and began to stamp on it furiously. Fionn crept quietly away. He took his cloak and travelled towards Tara, where the king lived. He had a plan. When Fionn came to Tara, he caught his breath in amazement. It was the most wonderful place he'd ever seen. An old man standing at the gate smiled at Fionn and said, You know, in a few days this will be gone. They will have to start building the palace all over again. Why? asked Fionn. Because of the fire-breathing monster that comes every year at Samhain and burns Tara to the ground. Why don't King Con's soldiers fight him? Why? Because Alan, the monster, plays the most beautiful music on his harp. As soon as he starts, everyone falls asleep. No one can stay awake to defend Tara. I could stay awake, said Fionn. The old man winked at him. I just happen to have something that might help you. He took up a spear from the ground and handed it to Fionn. The top was covered with a leather bag. Fionn began to pull it off. Be careful, said the old man. Ugh, said Fionn. The old man smiled. Yes, it's the most awful smell in the world, isn't it? The tip of the spear has a poison on it. Well, said Fionn, thank you, I'm sure. He took the spear and entered the ramparts of Tara. The king greeted him kindly, but when Fionn asked to be allowed to defend Tara from the monster, he frowned. You were only a young boy, the king said. The monster will kill you. But Fionn begged and begged, and in the end, King Khan agreed. On Samhain night, everyone left Tara, everyone but Fionn. Alone on the ramparts, he clutched his new spear in his hand, his heart pounding. Before long, Fionn saw something coming. A huge, scaly shape was creeping slowly across the moonlit plain, sniffing the ground as it travelled. Blue flames came from its mouth. It came closer and closer. <gasps> then it stopped. The most beautiful music began. The music became a lullaby. Fionn felt his head drop down. His eyes closed. He really, really wanted to sleep. It took all his willpower to reach for his spear and drag the leather bag off its tip. Right away, the air filled with the awful smell. Fionn's eyes sprang open and the monster stopped playing. His jaw dropped. Who are you and what's that awful smell? asked the monster. I'm Fionn and you're Island. I'm here to fight you. We'll see about that, said Island, and blew a flash of flame towards Fionn. But Fionn shook his cloak and put the fire out. You are a gifted lad the monster said, scratching behind his ear thoughtfully with a long iron claw. Well, are you ready to fight? 
asked Fionn impatiently. Not really, to be honest, said Ireland. I'm quite sure that spear wouldn't do me any good if you decided to stick it into me. Can we come to some arrangement? I will not. Come on, fight. Chicken? The monster was still eyeing the spear nervously. No need for name calling. To tell the truth, I'm getting a bit bored doing this every year. I've been thinking of retiring. There's a very good mermaid choir down at Invercalpa, looking for a museum to accompany them. My fiery breath doesn't do any harm in the water. But if I let you go away, you might come back to burn Tara again, said Fionn. Oh, I swear I won't. Word of a monster. Fionn thought for a minute. The monster batted his blue eyelashes at him. He looked rather like a dog asking for a bone. Fionn made up his mind. When King Kong arrived back in Tara, everyone was astonished to find the palace still standing. Fionn was waiting on the rampart, smiling. Oh, you've killed a monster, said Khan. Tell me what you would like in return. Fionn wondered if he should tell Khan that the monster was not really dead, but he had left Ireland practising scales with the mermaids at the mouth of the Boyne. He would not trouble Tara again. In return for fleeing, freeing Tara from the curse of Ireland, I would like to be head of my own group of warriors. I will call them the Fianna, said Fionn. And so it shall be, said Khan, and so it was. In all the stories, it is written that Fionn killed the monster Ireland. Only Fionn and Ireland know better. And now, so do you. Thank you for listening and bye-bye. <coughs>